the kingdom of Magadh. Magadha formed one of the 16 Mahajanpadas of ancient India. The core of the kingdom was the area of Bihar south of the Ganges. Its first capital was Rajagriha, modern Rajgir, then Patliputra, modern Patna. Magadh expanded to include most of Bihar and Bengal with the conquest of Lichavi and Anga, respectively, followed by much of eastern Uttar Pradesh and Odisha. The ancient kingdom of Magadh is heavily mentioned in Jain and Buddhist texts, as it was the main power in the geographic area where the Buddha and Mahavira were born. It is also mentioned in the Ramayana, the Mahabharata and the Puranas. A state of Magadh is recorded in Vedic texts much earlier in time than 600 BCE. King Bimbisara of Haryanka dynasty led an active and expansive policy, conquering Anga in what is now West Bengal. The death of King Bimbisara was at the hands of his son, Prince Ajatashatru. King Pasenadi, king of neighboring Koshala and brother-in-law of King Bimbisara, promptly retook the gift of the Kashi province. To launch his attack across the Ganges River, Ajatashatru built a fort at the town of Patliputra. The Haryanka dynasty was overthrown by Shishunaga dynasty. The last Shishunaga ruler, Kalasoka, was assassinated by Mahapadmananda in 345 BCE, the first of the so-called Nine Nandas, Mahapadma and his eight sons. In 326 BCE, the army of Alexander approached the western boundaries of Magadh. The army, exhausted and frightened at the prospect of facing another giant Indian army at the Ganges, mutinied at Hyphasis, the modern Bias River, and refused to march further east. Around 321 BCE, the Nanda dynasty ended and Chandragupta Maurya became the first king of the great Mauryan dynasty and Mauryan empire with the help of Chanakya. Strong rulers Magadh had efficient rulers who increased its power and prosperity. Among these rulers were Bimbisara, Ajatashatru and Mahapadmanandi. They expanded Magadh's territories through wars and alliances. Ajat Shatru fortified Patliputra, modern Patna, from where he could control Gangetic plains and the trade along the Ganga. Rajagriha was their capital. They built roads and canals and promoted river trade. The monarchy of Magadh emerged as the most powerful Mahajanpada of the 6th century BCE. By the time, Mahapadmananda became king. The Magadhan capital had been shifted to Patliputra. Mahapadmananda brought the entire Gangetic plain under his control. Rise of Cities The production of crops allowed some people to specialize in art and craft such as metalworking, carpentry, jewelry making, pot making, etc. The surplus crops and goods manufactured by the craftsmen led to trade. Cities grew around centers of trade and administration. They were well protected during war and peace. Agriculture Now, it was possible to grow two crops in a year. The lands were fertile in Gangetic Plain and also manure was in use. Plowshare, hoe, and other implements used in farming were now made of iron, which were hard and strong. Many canals and wells were dug to improve irrigation. In many cases, earlier methods of scattering seeds were replaced with transplantation of saplings in fields. These techniques in turn improved the quantity and quality of agricultural produce. Administration 
the rulers of Mahajanpada had plenty of resources which enabled them to maintain large and well-equipped, well-paid army for war and peace. This enabled them to control the Gangetic plain. The monarch was the supreme power in administration, though he was helped by ministers called Amatya. The Brahmins were important and powerful. The village was administered by the village headman, who had direct access to the king. The villagers themselves checked any misuse of authority by the village headman. The Mahajanpada was usually ruled from its capital city. There was intense rivalry among Mahajanpadas resulting in wars. Therefore, capital cities fortified themselves against enemy attacks by high walls built around them. Fortifications were usually made of mud, stone, wood or bricks. Revenue The important source of state revenue was in the form of taxes collected from people, that is, farmer, craftsmen, traders and artisans. Tax collectors collected taxes from the people. Land tax fetched the maximum revenue to the state. Taxes could be paid in money or a revenue share of one-sixth of the total agricultural produce. The revenue collected was spent on paying salaries to the people in administration and the army. It was also used on public works such as construction of roads and canals. Rest of it was deposited in king's treasury. Several copper plates have been found which suggest that king gave tax-free villages to Brahmins. Trade A good network of roads developed which encouraged trade and also for better administration and military movements. River and overseas trade also gained importance. Brigu Kacha became an important trading port. Punch marked coins of gold, silver and copper were used in transactions during trade. The merchants went village to village to collect the raw material. For example, cotton from the farmers, thread from the spinners and finally sold cotton cloth produced by the weavers. The merchants got a profit through supplying required goods. Society The artisans and merchants organized themselves into groups known as shrenis or guilds. Probably, they issued the punch-marked coins which were not issued by the king. As the artisans lived and worked together, they were regarded as a caste, jati. The sons followed the same profession as their fathers, so the caste became hereditary. Gradually, separate laws were made for each caste. People of one class or caste could not eat with those of another caste, nor they could marry outside their caste. Religion At this point of time, later Vedic religion was a religion of many rites and sacrifices. Outside the four Varnas, Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra, a fifth group of untouchables also developed. The untouchables were treated with contempt and were looked down upon. They were supposed to perform unclean jobs, but there was no rational reason for this attitude. The lawmakers laid down rules for the guidance of the life of the higher class, such as four stages of ashrama, brahmacharya, grihas, vanaprastha and sannyas. This was the ideal, but one does not know how many followed it. Purana stories do indicate when kings and persons of higher society have ignored the laws. Thus, in the 6th century BCE, Indian religious worship became so extremely rigid and ritualistic that people faced many hardships and felt uncomfortable in such a society. People in general 
thought that instead of making a show of worship, it was better to lead truthful, moral and dedicated lives. Two such men became famous as teachers of the religions, Jainism and Buddhism. Mahavira was the founder of what came to be called Jainism and Gautama Buddha preached Buddhism. Both of them belonged to the Republic and tribes of Lichavis and the Shankya respectively. They were brought up as the sons of chiefs. 